Have you heard the phrase, when it rains, it pours? That's momentum going in the wrong direction. In other words, life is moving fast the wrong way. Or everything he touches turns to gold. That's momentum going the right direction. Everything's moving fast. Well, I want to teach you how to build momentum to achieve your dreams. Boy, and you're watching Live Your Dreams. I pray that as you invest in yourself today, that you're captivated and you're catapulted to live your dreams. You know, you don't accidentally succeed or accidentally achieve your goals. In fact, John Maxwell says, nobody stumbles upon success and then says, wait, how did I get here? No, you tend to get in life exactly what you focus on. In fact, you know, you think about buzzards. Well, actually, I couldn't find a buzzard, but Buzzards, they fly around looking for dead stuff. Hummingbirds, actually I couldn't find a hummingbird, but hummingbirds, they fly around looking for sweet stuff. One looks for dead stuff, one looks for sweet stuff, but they both find what they're looking for. Well, you tend to get in life exactly what you focus on. So why not focus on gaining momentum to achieve your dreams? I was thinking about the word momentum. Momentum is actually defined as a force that moves stronger and faster over time. I think you could compare it to an airplane. You know, the toughest part about a plane is getting it up off the ground. But once that train or that plane gets up in the sky and starts moving, it's very hard to stop. Well, see, it's the same thing in your life and my life. When you get focused on the dreams and the goals, the vision that God's put in your heart, you start gaining momentum. There's no force from hell that can stop you from doing what God's put you on this earth to do. But you have to gain momentum. Like I said at the beginning, you've heard the phrase, when it rains, it pours. Well, that's just momentum working against you. In other words, life is moving fast in the wrong direction. Or people say everything he touches turns to gold. That's momentum working for you. Life is moving fast in the right direction. So why not get momentum working for you so you can start making progress? In fact, let me just ask you, how does someone like Dr. Seuss go from 27 publishers rejecting him, telling him his manuscript is not worth anything and might as well give up on his dream, to selling over 600 million copies of children's books in 20 languages around the world, one of the greatest children's authors of all time. How did he go from the rejections to being one of the greatest? He changed the momentum in the right direction. Well, same with my personal favorite rapper, you know, uh, MC Hammer. <laughs> MC Hammer, you know, he was born in poverty, living with eight siblings, crammed into a housing project, living in government housing. He ended up selling over 50 million albums. He went from rags to riches, actually back to rags and then more riches, became one of the greatest artists of all time. What happened? He changed the force of momentum in the right direction. Well, the same can happen for us when we get serious about the future and the dreams and the goals that God's put in your heart. Well, momentum is great, but it's everything that happens before momentum kicks in that counts. So it's great to have momentum, but it's everything that happens before that. So can you manufacture momentum? Absolutely. Is it easy? Uh Uh-uh. But I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you how to get that momentum in your life. My first point is, you will never leave where you are until you see where you'd rather be. You'll never leave where you are until you see where you'd rather be. In fact, years ago, I remember when I was in high school, my eyes got so bad, I couldn't see the chalkboard. At the football games, my eyes were so bad, I couldn't see the scoreboard. And I was a cheerleader, so I'm like doing backflips for the wrong team. I just couldn't see anything. (laughs) Well, years later, you know, well, actually in high school, We're taking this eye test, you know, at school. Everybody's doing it for driver's ed and stuff. And I was so nervous that I was going to fail the eye test because back then, glasses weren't cute. They weren't cool. And I did not want to wear glasses. So we're in the cafeteria. Everyone's lined up one after another, taking the eye test. Well, I was so nervous that I was going to fail the test that I memorized every single letter that the girl in front of me said. So when it came my turn to take the eye test, I looked in this little machine 
couldn't see a thing, and I just said every word she said. I said, C-O-M-P-T-W-L-M-Z, and I raised up. Well, the lady across the table just kind of looked at me like this. <laughs> then she said, could you repeat that? So I looked in the little machine, couldn't see a thing, and I confidently did it again. C-O-M-P-T-W-L-M-Z. Well, what I didn't realize is she switched the screen between the last girl and me. So the teacher just looked at me like, you are confidently blind. <laughs> so she said, honey, you need to go get your eyes professionally examined in your head. <laughs> well, obviously I failed the exam. So I went to an optometrist. My mom took me there and I'm sitting in the chair, you know, I'm waiting for them to put the eye chart on the wall. And finally the doctor says it is on the wall. So I'm squinting as hard as I could. Finally, I was just like, E? I mean, I couldn't see anything. The doctor said, sweetheart, I know what your problem is. He said, you're nearsighted. I said, no, no, no. I can't see the wall. Like, I can't even see you. I can't see far things. He said, I know. You're nearsighted. That means you see what's near. I like what Chris Hodges said. He said, it's the only medical profession that names your condition based on what you're good at. He said, it's like going to the doctor with a broken arm and they say, well, your legs work great. <laughs> so he's telling me, you're nearsighted. You can see what's near. So he prescribed these contacts, you know, I put them in. My mom's driving me home from the doctor that day. And it was like this whole new world just opened up for me. I was going, mom, you can actually read the street signs? <laughs> she said, oh, honey, I never knew you were blind as a bat. <laughs> well, then I remember seeing trees and I said, you can see the leaves on the trees because I had just gotten used to seeing this big green blur. I didn't know you were supposed to see little details. Well, I had gotten so used to only seeing what was right in front of me. I completely lost sight of everything out here. And for some of you, that may be your problem. You can't see beyond what's directly in front of you. You can't see what's in your future. In fact, you can tell if someone's nearsighted by what they talk about. If all they talk about are the problems they're dealing with, if all they talk about is other people, if all they talk about are just all the issues of their day-to-day -day life, then they're nearsighted. They've lost sight of the big picture that God has for their lives. Well, like I said before, if you want to go to the next level, you have to see the next level. What does the next level look like for you? See, you'll never leave where you are until you see where you'd rather be. You know, I've, I've shared before different stories about having a vision board and how passionate I am about having a vision. But see, the point is, it's one thing to have a vision board. But if you see nothing, you can expect nothing. You've got to get pictures and images of what you're believing God for. What do you see in your future? Well, I started doing that. I started putting pictures of me speaking at conferences. I started putting financial goals on my vision board. I went in a bookstore and just posed by the bookshelves as if I had books in the, on the shelf. I put pictures hosting a TV show. I put all these pictures of where I believe God wanted me to go. Well, what happened was I became farsighted. I got more focused on things out here than things up here, and my life began to build momentum in that direction. Well, the same thing can happen for you, but you have to get serious about building that momentum. In fact, I read where Tony Robbins said, the most important thing you can do to achieve your goals is to make sure as soon as you set them, you immediately begin to build momentum. Momentum, you know, at the beginning I said how momentum, it's defined as a force that moves stronger and faster over time. Well, like I said, you know, at the beginning, that force can work for you or it can work against you. If you don't have a vision for your life, if all you're looking at is a blank wall, then that's momentum working against you. Life is just dragging on year after year. But when you get serious about your vision, you get serious about your goals, you're going to start building momentum in the right direction. Now, I want to teach you what to do. You know, when I make a vision board, I put dreams and goals in a notebook. I don't just leave it on the wall and let it just hang there. No, I want to share with you one of the most powerful tools that God has given you to help you achieve your dreams. One thing is you have to learn to become your own best cheerleader. You know, you can't wait around for other people to come along to say, yes, you've got the right dream. You've heard from God. Here's something you have to remember, and you really have to hang on to these words. You have to remember that God hasn't necessarily told other people what he's told you about your vision, about your future. 
So you can't wait for all these people to come along, keep you motivated, keep you encouraged, be your cheerleader. No, you have to become your own best cheerleader when it comes to pursuing the plan of God for your life. You know, I have amazing parents, Jerry and Carolyn Savelle. I'm surrounded by some amazing people, but I can't, you know, call up my dad every single time I get a little discouraged and expect him to motivate me. I can, you know, I could push play and listen to his messages. I could call him if I wanted to, but I've had to learn to become my own best cheerleader. Well, you have to get fixed, firm, and focused on your vision. You know that word fixed? It means firm, secure, used to describe something that does not change. That means other people's negative words. It still doesn't change what God's put in your heart. If God's given you a vision to lose weight, if God's given you a vision to have a baby, if God's given you a vision to start a business or to preach the gospel, to write books, to have your own daycare, your own dance studio, whatever it is, vision is the ability to see what others can't see. So don't get mad if other people aren't cheering you on and agreeing with your vision. Vision is the ability to see what other people can't see. So I want to challenge you to get serious about your vision. Imagine, visualize your dreams with great clarity. You know, every time you get a word from the Lord, you know, a lot of ministers will have a word for the year. I've heard some amazing ones for 2017. But you've got to make that vision, that word clear to you. If it's a year to flourish, what does flourish mean to you? Define that out for you. Does that mean your, your marriage is flourishing? Well, what does that mean? Define that. That means your finances are flourishing. What does that mean? Does that mean you increased $10,000? Does that mean you paid off $3,000 of debt? See, when the vision is clear, the results will appear. So first step is get clear on your vision. Now, when we come back, I'm going to teach you how to use the most powerful tool that God has given us to achieve our dreams. I'm going to teach you how to become your own best cheerleader, how to stay motivated when circumstances look like it's not going to change. When time's going by, it looks like it's never going to change. You have to become your own best cheerleader. So when we come back, I'm going to share with you what this powerful tool is to go from wishing things would change to living your dreams. I'll be right back. Your words can be used to describe your life or they can be used to change your life. That's why Terry is offering you her new book, Pep Talk, Learn the Language of Success Through Positive Declarations. In it, you'll discover what to say from God's Word about your freedom, faith, finances, family, fitness, and your future dreams and goals. Use the sample declarations, including Terry's personal daily pep talk, to unlock your potential and rise to new levels. For a limited time, when you request the pep talk book, we'll also send you the Positive Declarations CD. As you listen to and confess these powerful declarations, your life will attract the success God has for you. So don't delay. Call toll-free 800-795-5597 or visit us online at terry.com to request your copy of Pep Talk along with the Positive Declaration CD. Discover the power of your words to make you happier, healthier, and more successful today. I'm so excited about my brand new book, Pep Talk, all about learning the language of success through positive declarations. You know, I've had to learn that in my own life or I wouldn't have written a book on this. How to stay motivated, how to stay positive when it looks like things aren't going to change. Or maybe you don't have the whole world around you cheering you on. You have to learn to become your own cheerleader. In fact, you know, some people call it affirmations or confessions or declarations. But the point is, it comes straight from the Word of God. In fact, the Bible says, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. We have to learn to encourage ourselves instead of waiting for everybody else to believe in us. I love what Dr. Daniel Amen said. He said he has this 18-40-60 rule. He said when you're 18, you kind of worry what everybody thinks about you. When you're 40, you don't care what anybody thinks about you. And when you're 60, you realize... Nobody's been thinking about you. (laughs) They're too busy thinking about their own life. So you have to become your motivator, your cheerleader to achieve your dreams. You know, the most successful people in the world practice this. Olympians, CEOs. In fact, Olympians, they actually hire self-taught trainers to keep them motivated. CEOs practice this. Celebrities practice this. Jim Carrey, Tim Tebow, Susie Orman, Will Smith, you name it. They practice making positive declarations or affirmations over themselves. Well, 
Like I said, this came from God's Word. God's the one who said in Romans 4, 17, that we, he says, we serve a God who gives life to the dead and he speaks of non-existent things as if they already exist. So that's what you're doing every time you speak life over your dreams. You speak life to your body, to your health, to that marriage that looks like it's dying. You're calling things that be not as though they already are. Well, life and death are in the power of the tongue. So it may look like your dreams are never going to happen, but don't speak it. It may look like it's going to take years for you to achieve that dream, but don't speak it. In fact, it may appear that nothing is working in your favor. In fact, life is going the opposite direction, but don't speak it. If you want to know where your life is headed, listen to the words that are coming out of your mouth. That's a powerful statement. If you want to know where your life is headed, listen to the words that are coming out of your mouth. You know, like I said, it comes from the Word of God. You know, professional people practice this. But you know that even scientifically, it's been proven how powerful words are. Listen to this experiment that was done by Dr. Emoto using water over cooked rice. This is what he did. He got three jars of rice and he put three different labels on each jar. He filled it with cooked rice and then he said what he did was he labeled them with a different label. One of them he labeled, thank you. The other one he labeled, you're an idiot. And then the third one he just left unlabeled. Every day for one solid month, Dr. Emoto would speak to the container based on the labels. He spoke pleasant, affirming words to the rice label, thank you. He yelled harsh, demeaning words to the you're an idiot jar. And to the third jar, he simply ignored it altogether. After 30 days of consistent treatment, the thank you jar began to ferment, look appealing, and give off, a, give off a pleasant, strong aroma. The you're an idiot jar, it turned mostly black and mushy, giving off a sour milk aroma. And the neglected rice simply began to rot and mold. Since then, other scientists, college students, and even homeschoolers have duplicated this experiment, witnessing the same or similar results, proving how powerful our words are in producing the outcome in our lives. Now think about that. If rice can be affected by positive and negative words as well as total neglect, how much more can your circumstances be affected by the same, dramatically affected by the same? So speaking positive words, speaking negative words, and simply ignoring your situation altogether. We see in each situation, it's affected by words. Well, you know, I began doing this years ago. In fact, in 2007, I mean, I was insecure, um, unqualified, uh, shy, you name it. I had everything going against me. And I just made this little list, this was in 2007, made a little list of positive declarations to begin speaking over myself. I went in my little guest bedroom and I just made it a part of my routine. Every single day I'd go in there before I went off to work, spend some time with the Lord, and I'd get out my list of declarations. Now I've put my personal declarations in here, but these were some of the things that I would say. I'm unique, I'm healthy, I'm disciplined, I'm proactive, I'm committed to pursue and achieve my dreams and goals, I'm in the best physical shape of my life, I'm focused, I'm highly organized, I'm successful, I'm confident to speak on television, I'm confident to speak to live audiences, I'm energetic, I'm known for my giving, I'm merciful and I receive mercy, I walk in love and avoid strife at all costs. I'm bold and courageous. Why? Because I was shy and scared. I would say I'm full of passion and enthusiasm. I would declare consistently, and I still do, my spirit attracts God-inspired ideas that produce millions of dollars. Now, I begin saying this over and over and over. Every day, just before I run out the door, I begin declaring positive declarations over myself. And then also I would speak positive faith-filled scriptures over myself. Um, one of them that I love is so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. I say that all the time. That's why I have it memorized because I speak these things all the time. Now imagine saying, I will be strong and not give up for my work will be rewarded. Or God has given me the desires of my heart and making all my plans succeed. Can you imagine saying that every day before you walk out the door? It builds your spirit up. It causes, you know, depression to lift. It causes insecurities to vanish. It gives you that confidence and that courage that maybe you're lacking. Well, as I began doing that, 
hearing those words over and over and over. Some of you have heard stories how I went from ghostwriting books for other people to authoring books. I went from attending conferences to speaking at conferences. I went from watching TV for hours after work to hosting a TV show. What happened? As I began speaking and prophesying my future, my life began to move in the direction of my words. And the same will happen for you. You know, I've done this in the area of weight loss. You know, when I turned a certain age, when I turned 40, people were telling me, oh, be warned, your metabolism's going to slow down. In fact, you're going to have to work out twice as hard as you did when you were in your 20s. Well, I started kind of agreeing with those words, and I started seeing changes in my body. But then finally, I started making positive declarations and speaking scriptures out of my mouth. And I've got my whole chapter in here on fitness goals. And I'm telling you, my body began to line up with my words and the weight came off and I haven't struggled since. Same with marriage. My marriage was restored as a result of speaking God's word over my marriage, declaring things like God has given me a new love story with my husband. God is restoring the years that Satan has stole from us, speaking those things over and over and over. And I'm glad to say we just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. Well, I put chapters in here. One of them is all about how to get free from the past, using positive declarations over your past. Because, you know, I couldn't pursue my future until I got free from the past. So I had to start declaring things like I'm valuable. I'm loved by God. I'm forgiven. I forgive myself. I forgive those who've hurt me. And then, like I said, my life began to line up with my words. So I want to challenge you to do this. You know, a lot of times you hear preachers say things, you're like, you need to confess the word, you need to make a list of declarations. Well, I've heard that for years. Well, I gave you a cheat sheet in here. In fact, I've got chapters in here. One is on freedom, one's on your faith, one's on financial goals, declarations and scriptures to go with it. One's all about your family. You know, you need to start confessing things over your family consistently. In fact, Every time I get on an airplane, my mom and dad will text me and say, we pray Psalm 91 over you. And then when they're flying somewhere, I text them, I'm praying Psalm 91 over you. Well, you know, you can hear that, but what does Psalm 91 say? Well, I put that in here and made it personal so you can start declaring that over your family every day before they run out the door. Like I said, there's a chapter on fitness, how to get your mouth lined up with the Word of God so the weight starts coming off, so you don't struggle another five years, ten years with unnecessary fitness challenges. You can actually change your body when you change your mouth. So you have to learn how to program your mind for greatness. You know, when I say that, what I mean is what you say to others isn't nearly as important as what you say to yourself. How you talk to yourself, it determines how successful you will be. Period. How you talk to yourself determines how successful you will be. In fact, I actually, you know, I told my team, I said, I want to make an audio of me making these positive declarations, but I want to have a little pause between every declaration so that you can repeat it. Because you need to hear yourself making positive declarations. And you know, the first time you do this, you may feel like a nut. I know the first time I, you know, made my list of declarations, I went in my guest bedroom and I'm walking around in circles, you know, declaring these things. I'm fit, firm, and muscular. I'm unique. I'm healthy. I'm disciplined. I'm proactive. I felt ridiculous, but you know what? This nut gets results and you will too if you make it a priority in your life. Make it a part of your routine. You could just even list 10 things and every day before you run out the door, you are determined to make positive declarations over yourself. Or put this in your car while you're driving and just start making those declarations on your way to work, on your way to pick up the kids, on your way home, on your way to the grocery store. Or in the morning while you're getting ready, you're listening to positive declarations. You're confessing them. You're repeating them. And here's the thing. What you repeatedly hear, you eventually believe. You're going to start believing you're proactive. You're going to start believing you're energetic or you have the mind of Christ or you have an excellent memory. So your personal pep talk, it can help you lose weight, get good grades, achieve promotion, close sales. It can help you get along with people. When you start declaring, I walk in love and avoid strife at all costs, it'll help you get along with people. It'll help you win awards. It, you know, it's even helped Olympians win gold medals when they use their self-talk. Well, the language of success 
Your dreams could be delayed because of what you're saying. That's a powerful statement, isn't it? Your dreams could be delayed because of what's coming out of your mouth. So I want to challenge you. Trade all those negative words for positive declarations. And you know, I, you can't grow up in Jerry Savelle's home and not know the power of words. In fact, if you said anything like, that scared me to death, or I would have a heart attack if that happened, you might as well have cussed in our house. You would get scolded for talking so negatively. So I've known the power of words my whole life. But I, ne I didn't necessarily do the opposite, which was proactively speak positive declarations over myself. So when I started doing this, speaking declarations over my body, over my finances, over my future dreams and goals, just calling things that be not as though they already are, that's when my life began to go to a whole new level. So I want to challenge you to get this special offer. This is the brand new book, Pep Talk. Learn the language of success through positive declarations. There's some amazing stories in here. People healed of cancer, people achieving their dreams by changing the way they're talking about themselves. There's weight loss examples in here of people who literally lost weight because they changed the program in their mind. Here's the positive declarations audio for you to listen to over and over and over and get into that routine, get into that habit of making declarations. Now, if you're interested in getting the entire pep talk kit, this has a gratitude journal in it, which I know will be a blessing to you. When I started journaling my gratitude, it caused massive acceleration in my life. There's an entire audio on here called The Power of Gratitude, and the whole audio book for Pep Talk is in the Pep Talk kit. So if you're interested in that, get the whole kit. But I really want you to make this a defining moment in your life. Stop the negative talk and replace it with positive declarations. This doesn't happen by accident. It happens when you do it on purpose with intentional effort. So let me just remind you, don't look at all the years you've lost. Let's look at the years you've got left and start living your dreams. Learn the language of success through positive declarations. Let me just remind you, it's time for you to become your own best cheerleader. Your words can be used to describe your life, or they can be used to change your life. That's why Terry is offering you her new book, Pep Talk, Learn the Language of Success Through Positive Declarations. In it, you'll discover what to say from God's Word about your freedom, faith, finances, family, fitness, and your future dreams and goals. Use the sample declarations, including Terry's personal daily pep talk, to unlock your potential and rise to new levels. For a limited time, when you request the pep talk book, we'll also send you the Positive Declarations CD. As you listen to and confess these powerful declarations, your life will attract the success God has for you. So don't delay. Call toll-free 800-795-5597 or visit us online at terry.com to request your copy of Pep Talk talk along with the Positive Declaration CD. Discover the power of your words to make you happier, healthier, and more successful today.